Hey, this is Kid again. Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to focus on log and function. And this video is targeting on SL students, especially if it's in this new syllabus, basically SLAA, math. But speaking of that, we will actually look at some HL past paper. And I find some questions that are very suitable for SL. And as we know, SL has been getting harder and harder. So it's not unusual now that SL students can and should try some HL questions to get them familiar with more different types of questions. So, so for example, this one is a 2014 paper. This is only question three. So as we all know, the question get harder and harder in, in the section. So this is not too hard for HL but it could be slightly tricky for an SL student. So the question is simply, what is A? So where A is log three base two times log four base three times log five base four, all the way up to log 32 base 31. Mm, as an SL student, you should really give it a try since this question is having five points, you can have around five minutes to work it out. So uh, try to give yourself three minutes to think about what to do. And there's a simple trick. So if you got it, you should get the question really quick. So the actual calculation is really short. Okay, pause the video now, give it a go. Answer coming, three, two, one. Now, all the log have different base. This should be a number one sign of using the change base formula. So you probably heard that the change base formula is like this. So is the original number is on top and then the base go to the bottom and you lock it. And then you can choose the new base to be anything you like, as long as you do it the same for the top and bottom. Yeah, so if we use this on this question, so we may say, okay, so log three base two would be written as log three base two. Uh, sorry, log three over log two. Now at this stage, we don't have to decide on the new base just yet. So let's just see what would happen. So multiply the next one is log four over log three. And the next one is log five over log four. Now here, you should be able to see a pattern coming through. The pattern is the fact that this log three would cancel out this log three. This log four would cancel out this log four. So you're expecting this log five to cancel out the next thing there, so on and so forth. And at the end, there will be a log 31 in front here, and it will cancel out this log 31. Right, try to rewatch this if you don't get it. So at the end, you should only have log 32 over this log two. Okay, then let's think about what is this. Turn out 32 is related to two. If you think about it, 32 is actually 2 to the power 5. So if you do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, it will happen that you get 32. So divided by log 2. By the log property, the 5 can drop to the front. Right. And then this log 2 can cancel this log 2 and then you go to 5. Okay. So this is the first question. Now, in case you're not too familiar with what's going on here, which are the basic stuff that you can do or you cannot do. For example, if you're wondering, can I delete the lock here? Can I cancel the lock here? Well, the answer first of all is no, but a detailed explanation. Wow, I have something special to announce, but let's wait till the end of this video. Okay, let's do the next question. 
Again, I've chose a uh, HL question, 2015. This one is a bit more technical, which is normal because this is the question nine, so it's uh, considered a harder question in HL, but uh, it's still manageable for an, an SL student, especially if you're aiming for a seven. Now, the first question is, if you have a function this, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the symbol, but it really just means your function fx equal log x base a. So this this x and arrow stuff basically mean uh, function. The question is if my log as a function has base a, state the set of values of a. So it's basically saying what could the base of a log B. Okay. Now, I'm not sure if you know this, but simply put, the base of a log cannot be negative. So the base has to be positive. Also, the base of a log cannot be zero. Because if you think about it, if this is zero, then zero taken to the power of anything will still be zero. That means if a is zero, then x is always zero. That is not very interesting, right? Therefore, a cannot be zero. Okay, so there's no equal sign in our inequality sign. The last thing is a also cannot be one. For the same reason, if a is one, 1 to any power would still be 1. Therefore, if a is 1, x is always 1. So again, not very interesting. Now you may be thinking, well, what's math have to do with being interesting or not? By not being interesting, I really means that if a is 1, so if a is 1, then x is always 1, right? So the graph of that function would be a vertical line at x equal to 1, because no matter what happened, x is always 1. If you remember something called the vertical line test, this is against the vertical line test, that would make this not a function. But the question specifically said that this should be a function, and this function exists, therefore this situation cannot happen, and therefore a cannot be 1, and similarly a cannot be zero. So this is very technical, but I've covered this in my special announcement stuff that is coming. But before that, let's do this. Uh, part B, so question is uh, almost like solving this equation, but to uh, make y the subject. And when y becomes the subject, the other side should only have stuff in terms of x okay so let's do this similar to the last question you can probably see that they have different base for the two log so again that's the number one reason to do change base formula right then I hope you are familiar with the concept of cross multiplying. So we'll multiply this bottom to this side and multiply this bottom to the right hand side. So we have log y times log y. So be careful, log y times log y is log y bracket square. Similarly, log x times log x is log x bracket square. Okay, if you miss the bracket, which you might write this, this actually means you square the y and then lock it, and it will be different from what we have here. Okay, very different. Now it should be clear that we should take square root on both sides. So root four is two. And when you take square root, there is plus or minus, obviously. And since this is solving a log equation, you would want to bring this power bring the number up to inside the log as the power. So I hope you're really familiar with these properties of log. Otherwise, 
you need my special announcement. So go up, it's plus or minus two. And obviously then we can cancel the lock on both sides. So y is x to the power of plus or minus two, which means it's x squared or x to the power of minus two, which means it's x squared or one over x squared. Okay. Yep. So that would do it. Okay, so we're moving quite quickly today. Here's the third question. This is a question on the topic of function, and more specifically, rational function, the graph of rational functions, the asymptotes and stuff. Uh, most schools don't really cover this topic well enough, in my opinion. So I uh, want to talk about them in this video. So uh, again, this is a nature question, 2016, paper three, so not too hard. It's really doable for SL students. So the question is this, they give you the graph of a rational function, they give you the form of that rational function. The question is basically what are A and B and C? Okay. So the real key for this question is knowing if a rational function is in this form, how do you find the horizontal asymptote of that rational function and the vertical asymptote of that rational function? So if you know, let's start with vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote is always found by the denominator equal to zero. So it's x minus two equals zero. Therefore, x is c. Right, but we can see that the vertical asymptote is actually x equal to 3. So that simply means c is 3. Okay, do you get it? Let's try again on the horizontal. So you need to know how to find the horizontal asymptote for this type of rational function. If you know, this is really something you should memorize. Uh, it's just the number in front just a number in front. So the horizontal asymptote should have been y equal to a. And since it's one, so a is one. Now, in case you're wondering why is it a, is because of this. So the function is in the form of this. Now, if you think about it, a horizontal asymptote is talking about what happened and what happened on both ends when x becomes really, really big. So when x go to negative infinity, and when x go to positive infinity, it will get closer and closer to this value of one in this case, but it can never actually be one. So it will only get really, really close to it, but not actually one. So if you look at this expression, then you can ask what happened if x becomes really, really big. So we say we in math we write as x approaches infinity. Then if you think about it, ABC is just ordinary numbers. So if you have x being a super huge number, take away a little bit, it would still be huge. And then you have B divided by some huge number. What would you get? Well, you get something really small. What what do we mean by you get something really small? It means when x get larger and larger, this whole thing will get closer and closer to zero, right? Because let's say if you have like three over like a million or something, then you get something really close to zero because you get basically get zero point zero 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 something, all right? So we get really close to zero. So when x becomes really big, this whole thing becomes really close to zero, but then you add a, so the whole function get really close to a. Well, that is exactly the meaning of a horizontal asymptote. The function get really close to this line. That's why a is the horizontal asymptote. So we already figure out a, oh, it's one, c is three. Now, what about b? 
Uh, note that on the graph, I also have this point, one zero, so it should be obvious that I should put that in. So the function is a plus b over c x minus c. So we know a is one, uh, x is three, no, I don't mean x, c is three, and the point we are given is one zero. So we put y to be zero, we put x to be one, and so this is negative two, so we move the one to the left, so it's minus one equal to b over negative two, we multiply negative two to that side, negative one times negative two is two, so b is two. Right, so that would be the contents of today, but if you're not familiar with any of the stuff I mentioned, for example this, how do you find asymptotes if a rational function is in this form? And bear in mind there is, is an other form for rational function. If you're not familiar with that, okay, or you are not familiar with, for example, this kind of stuff, okay, what could a base of a log be? Or even worse, you're not familiar with how do you deal with log equation like this, or log properties like this. I have a big thing for you. I am now putting up completely full courses on Udemy to give you a complete course on SLAA math. So I've started with the topic of log and function and for the first 10 people to use my code down below in the subscription, they will get the course for free. So please go there, try to review the course, see if you like it and support me a little bit over there if that is exactly what you need. And if you got my course for free using my code, please write a review for me. I would really appreciate that. And I will see you over there. And that's it. Another day, another video.